So another type of work would be shaft work. So I'm going to draw this thing a second. Um, actually, I'll do it like this. Like that, okay. And then I have a gear is attached to this thing. Okay. And with my gear, <clears throat> let's define this little area here. Okay. And I have an angle, theta, right here. And this thing here is ds. And, and as this is happening, I have a force that goes down. And each one of these blue lines is the radius of that outer circle. And so I can discuss this whole idea in terms of uh, a torsional work or some sort of... Uh, some some torque that's being provided to, for the, to this gear or shaft to be able to spin, okay? And so I'm going to call this shaft work, which, uh, again, just from the general terms of, of the physics, okay? It's got to be the integral of F dS, okay? Some sort of force times dS. Well, what is my force? I have a torque that's being applied. And if I'm being quite general, torque, tau, is going to be F times R, okay, not radius, force times that radius, uh, it, it, you know, some, some vector algebra that's inherent in it, but I'm not going to deal with it. So just, just imagine simple, as simple as, as simple as possible, F times R, and so that means that my force is tau divided by the radius, okay? Strictly speaking, from mathematics, not from physics, not from chemistry, if I have a little portion of a circle, like that, with an angle, and this is R and R, and this is DS, then I can determine the, uh, that uh, DS is equal to R D theta. Okay? So the length of this arc is the radius times the change in angle. And let me show you how that's even more intuitive when you have a whole circle. When I have an entire circle, what's my angle? Well, 360 degrees, 2 pi. So if I go here and I say the angle is 2 pi, then the, surf, the area, the, sorry, the length around this, this, this ds, this delta s at this point, uh, becomes 2 pi times r, right? Which is the circumference of a circle. So this tells you that. So it just gives me a fragment of the circumference to tell me what the length of that, the arc length of that is. It's just, it's just, just the arc length. So if I know then that ds is equal to uh, r d theta, well, if I put that into the shaft work, into that integral, work shaft, uh, then f is tau over r, the r's will cancel, you see that? Because this, this is being multiplied by this. So these r's will cancel, and I get tau d theta, and it goes from theta 1 to theta 2. Okay, and then basically the number of times I go around the circle tells me the amount of work that either I put into it or that it did for me. And that's known as shaft work. So I can evaluate that integral so we have to deal with this all the time. So I could say basically that the shaft work, you know, if I, I just take, if I say the tau is independent of the theta, then it's just T theta. Well, theta is just the angle that went around and so I know that each circle, each circle will be 2 pi, right? And how many times, how many circles, how many revolutions did I do? That, that will be able to quantify for me uh, what, that, what, that would, what kind of work I'm doing. So I'm just going to count the number of revolutions. Each revolution that I'm running is 2 pi, right? So gears usually revolve quite a bit, or if I have a steering element like a stir stick, it's revolving around a circle. So I can count how many circles I'm doing. And from that alone, you get the theta, and from that alone, I can get, at times tau, I can get the shaft work. So the shaft work ends up being tau times, well, a circle times, well, how many circles did I do? N for number of circles, number of revolutions. And that gives me the shaft work. Okay? But if it, again, if it's positive, it's doing work for me. If it's negative, I have to do that. I have to put work into that. 